Thank you all so much for coming. You are the most important people in any theatre. Without you, there is no play. Without you, there is no drama. Without you, there is only silence. You may think you are sitting in an old barn with uncomfortable seats and inadequate heating, but you're not. You are sitting in the court at Elsinore. You are in the forest of Arden. You are on the steps of the Senate in Rome. This humble theater is a portal to a world of imagination that can transport us from our humdrum existence and allow us to take part in the greatest stories ever told. And this portal is about to be closed. The council has withdrawn its grant, and unless we can raise 50,000 pounds, it's going to sell the building to be turned into executive homes. Now, I know executives need homes, but they also need dreams. Which is why I implore you to take this last chance to save our theatre. If not, the community will not just lose its theatre, it will lose its soul. Very eloquent, Dorothy. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, I could, probably. The emotion was perhaps a touch overwrought at the end. Oh, good shut up, Nigel. I thought it was bloody marvellous. Well, I'm not here. But will it work? Only one way to find out. Well, let's let the public in. That is the point of the public meeting, after all. Uh, Dennis, if you would be so kind as to open the doors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid nobody's come. What? No one? Well, it is a cold night and we are up against Strictly. So that's it then. There is to be no last appeal. Well, maybe people felt the last, last appeal was one last appeal too many. <laughs> They've given up on us. And so the final curtain descends. <coughs> La Comedia è finita. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Nigel. Well, I thought that was a whole point. Maybe we should give it ten minutes. I've given it ten years, Mary. Not to mention a second mortgage. If you need a shoulder to cry on. Uh, thank you, Nigel. But perhaps what it really needs to face the truth. Who am I kidding? Maybe nobody wants to see us prancing about in fancy dress, spouting words written hundreds of years ago. So shall we go home then? We uh, could catch the end of Strictly. If we had a star, people would come. Well, actually, I was described as the star of our toad of toad hall. A real star, Nigel. Someone who's been on telly or in films. Mary might have a point. Is there no escaping celebrity culture? And if we got a star, we could get publicity. And if we got publicity, we could get sponsorship. So it's settled then. So who are we going to get? How about nobody in their right mind? It is great to be back. I love this place. What? Heathrow? Please do not smoke. <laughs> and your crazy British sense of humor. You guys slay me. Good morning, people. I just landed in the You know, but still, it's a pretty big capacity for isn't it? Not really. I'm an actor. Acting's what I do. And theater has always been my first love. And deep down, I've always been looking for my opportunity to repay my debt to the muse. Ever since they cancelled your last movie? Ah, no. I've traveled the country over, stopped in each and every. Uh, no, the uh, Ultimate Finality franchise had reached its natural conclusion, and I've been looking for other opportunities. I've traveled this country over, stopped in each and every town. Well, maybe say yes to Shakespeare. I get sent hundreds of scripts every single week. This one just stood out. Why? The writing. Show real talent. I'm so tired of drifting. Uh, drifting around from town to town. But to have an American action hero really be King Lear? To be or not to be? <laughs> That's the question. Once I married a woman. Smoking is only permitted in the special.
That's Hammond. Whatever. Besides, my agent tells me I get all the best lines and I'm in every scene. I married a woman. And I thought I had her all by myself. But isn't it going to be a bit of a come down for a star like yourself to be performing in such a small theater? And when I found out she didn't love me, she was loving someone else. There's only one person out there. I'll play to them. And I do follow in illustrious theatrical footsteps. And many great Hollywood legends have performed in England. And we've got Nicole, Gwyneth, and Kevin, and Dustin, but none before have performed Shakespeare at Stratford. This marks the pinnacle of my career. Jefferson Steele is at the top of his game. But you'd be acting with amateurs. Ah, uh, you don't give yourselves enough credit. You Brits aren't so bad. Are you really going to save the theater? Well, it's a tall order. But as Jack Finality tells the president at the end of uh, Ultimate Finality 4, I'll give it my best shot. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded and the struggle is pretty tough. And admitting the fact she's burning to act, it's really not enough. She has nice hands to give the wretched girl her due, but don't you think her bust is too developed for her age? I repeat, Mrs. Worthington, sweet Mrs. Worthington, don't put your daughter on the stage. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Jefferson Steele. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're too kind. <laughs> May I say, on behalf of us all, that it is a privilege and an honor to share a stage with you. You were our first choice on the very top of our wish list. Thank you. Thank you. you. You know, there is nothing more humbling for an actor than to receive the approbation of his peers. So first, allow me to present our valiant stage management team, who will also be taking on some of the smaller roles. Uh, May I introduce you to your fellow players? Yes. Uh, Dennis Dobbins, who will be taking on the role of the Earl of Gloucester. Watch ya. Larry Blunkett, who will be playing Goneril, then probably Reagan. There's a certain amount of doubling up, but I think it could be interesting theatrically. It's an honor, Mr. Steele. And can I just say you're so much younger than you look in your films. <laughs> Not that you look old in the mind, you look young, very young, especially in the old ones. Thanks. <laughs> I love all your films, particularly The Fugitive. That wasn't mine. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I would remember. And of course, Nigel Dupree, who will be giving us his Earl of Kent. The privilege is all mine. And this is Dennis again. Oh, who's also playing at Guts. Hey, Jefferson, do you mind being in a selfie? Look, Dennis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, excuse me a moment. <clears throat> I've never heard of any of these people before. Where's uh, Judy Dench? Uh, Kenny Branagh? Maggie Smith? All otherwise engaged, I'm afraid. We've got a problem here. I need to talk to the director. You are? You're the director. Yes, I am. I thought you were the driver. Well, I'm that too. She's also playing the fool. She's very good. She used to be in the business. What? But as the director, I quite like to have a gentle read-through just to get an initial feel for the play, okay? Jefferson Steele does not do read-throughs. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting around listening to everybody else's lines. <laughs> oh, and don't tell me that this dump is the rehearsal room. Oh, no. Well, thank God for that. Well, this is our theater. A poor thing, but all right. Jeez. What has the Royal Shakespeare Company come to? The Royal Shakespeare Company? Uh, my agent told me I'd be playing Lear at Stratford. And so you are. We are the Stratford Players. Right, right. <laughs> Stratford, where, where Shakespeare was born. Uh, not exactly. Um, this is Stratford, but it isn't on Avon. This is Stratford St. John, Suffolk. We're just a small amateur drama group. <laughs> oh, 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 I am going to kill my agent. Charlie Rosen is a dead man. I did explain.
explain all this in my letter to Mr. Rosen. Oh. You see, the council has cut off our funding, and unless we raise the money, we'll have to kill it. And once I have killed him, I'm going to dig him up so I can kill him again. But you see, a big name means a uh, big sponsorship, big publicity. You are going to save our little theater. I hate to disappoint you, lady, but Jefferson Steele is not so washed up that he has to accept charity gigs. But you promised. It was on the news. You were really inspiring. Theater is in my blood, and all that stuff. Very moving. I was acting, you idiot. Charlie Rosen, you moron. You booked me in the wrong goddamn Stratford. No, I'm in Stratford and Nowheresville. Really? What do you mean you knew? No, Charlie, I will not calm down. I'm going to rip out your guts and stuff them down your throat. <coughs> Charlie. You've got to get me out of here, Charlie. Now. But, but it can't be too late. Oh, it was just one lousy press conference. <laughs> Nobody saw it. <laughs> it's six o'clock news over here, mate. And every network in the States. Great. No, Charlie, I am not pleased. Oh, look, you're trending on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and the press conference, it's on the YouTube. <laughs> no, no, you halfwit. I am not making a noble sacrifice and going back to my theatrical roots. I'm stuck here with a bunch of amateurs. Charlie? Hello? Hello? Holy crap! I'm afraid we have a save the theater swear box. Give a shit. And I'm not saving your stupid theater either. Everything going all right? Yeah, I'm Mr. Steele. May I introduce you to Lauren Bell, who is the public relations director of our sponsor, who has very kindly paid for your flights and is meeting a lot of other production costs. Mr. Steele, I'm a big, big fan of yours. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> so, who is this big sponsor? A global bank or a blue chip multinational? It's Bell's Ales, Suffolk's premier independent brewery. So we're talking chicken feed here. Mr. Steele is a bit upset at the moment as there seems to be something of a misunderstanding. See, he thought he was playing the air at Stratford or Navy. Oh dear. That's not going to be a problem, is it? Well, it's an easy mistake to make. There are several Stratfords in Britain. Uh, there's Stratford in East London. And Stratford, Tony in Wiltshire. Stratford St. Agnes in Somerset. Okay, I think Mr. Steele gets the picture. Stratford St. Andrew, Stratford St. Mary, <laughs> Stratford St. Patrick, Stratford St. Bernard. Can you do me a favour? <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> Dennis, can you do me a favour? Shut up! I think Mr. Steele must be very tired from his flight. Perhaps he'd like to go and have a rest. Good idea. Just t take me to the hotel. Oh, well, you're not in a hotel as such, Mr. Steele. We're putting you up in Mary's bed and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this cannot be happening to me. Well, we thought you would prefer somewhere unpretentious. Well, you were wrong. I definitely <laughs> would prefer pretentious. But Mr. Steele, you forgot your bags. No, you forgot my bags. Rush up your Shakespeare, start quoting it now. Rush up your Shakespeare, and the women you will wow. That if you can't be a ham and do anglet, they will not give a damn or a damn it. With the wife of the British ambassador, try a line to Troilus and Cressida. If she says she won't buy it or type it, make her type it once more as you like it. Trust up your shit and they'll all count out.